I'm here today on a uh, club trip to the Hungry Hollow. So you can see here's the pit. It's a bit wet, but you know, we'll survive. Um, I know that I, I want to focus on that cliffside because last time I was here, some people found some good trilobites and there was even a blastoid found there. So I'm going to head over there. So wish me luck, guys, and I'll try and show you guys uh, any good things that I find. Though it might be hard because my phone is kind of not, doesn't have a lot of battery. So I don't know how much video I'm going to be able to do on this trip. So, so I was just checking out the bottom of the pit quickly. Pulled out this brachiopod with one of its wings at least there. Usually they're missing both of them. So I'll take that home as a good example to what to see. And then I found the largest of these gastropods ever. Like, look at this guy. It's a decent size. Usually they're like a fourth of the size of this guy. And it's got like these little rings on it. And I'm wondering if those are like little uh, tiny creatures, like barnacles or something. That kind of idea that attached itself to the gastropod shell. But it's a very nice size. I'm quite happy with that. So I'm at this section of the cliffside. You can see that's like the main area that people usually collect at. If you go to the right, there's this one section, and you'll see it down here, where there's a there's a layer of tentaculites. Um, last year, last time I came here, I got really lucky and I got a decent sized plate. I picked out a couple tiny plates today, but I thought I'd show you guys if you ever if you ever do go on a hungry hollow trip and you're interested in looking for tentaculites, it's right in this section, and you can see the layer. It's probably about, just about this, the, like this thick. And it seems like that layer just erodes out tentaculite plates. And it's only in this specific section that I've uh, seen the, the plates come out here. Though I know there are other areas where you can find tentaculite plates, but this is where I've seen people have the most success when uh, getting tentaculite plates. So I just found the largest favocyte I've ever seen. Now, it's not whole, there's damage on the edges, but just for my hand, for scale, like look at that thing. It came out right up there. I just saw this cleaned off section, and I was like, well, that looks like a huge chunk of favocyte. Let's just dig around it and see if, uh, if it's pretty whole. And sure enough, there's, I think this is, it would have been, it's a round coral, so I think this edge is pretty, pretty unbroken. You can kind of see the the circular shape and then it's here here and here where it seems to have broken off but that is still a giant favocyte the ones i the biggest ones i have in my collection are probably that's like half half the size or well not half the size but that that half circle and so i've just been rooting around the top edge pulled a couple uh brachiopods and I also found this piece with, where is it? It's pretty dirty now, but there's a, there's a trilobite head in there somewhere. But yeah, I'll show you if I find anything else. So this hillside here, you can find some nice pyrotized stuff. And I found this nice, large, decent sized bay valve. It's a bit busted, but I've got two of the pieces of it. It's still a decent size, and it's nice and pyrotized, so it'll clean up nicely. And once I glue that bit back on, I'm sure it'll look pretty pretty well whole. But yeah, nice. This section you can also find, um, you can find uh, fish bones and fish plates. I found what I think is just a tiny section of a fish jaw last year, but I'd have to look at it again. And it's stored away somewhere, so I can't find it. I can't look at it at home right now, but who knows. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting little spot. Found a uh, gastropod. It's a spiny one. You see those nubs? I've just learned that those nubs used to be spines. But then on the back, you can see the arms of what it would have been a crinoid. I checked the area, couldn't find the calyx, so it washed out, but cool little guy biggest gastropod I've found. It's a nice one too. And I found this weird pyrotized lump. I'll have to take it home and clean it and check it out because it's weird. 
So, you know, anything weird, you take home and clean it up. This section, the, the trip leader just pulled out a, a nice section of bony plate. But then I pull, pulled out this largest, the largest piece of uh, fish bone I found from uh, old placoderms. It's very interesting, so I have to clean it up and take some uh, closer pictures of it and see if it's something interesting. I was down there. That's where I found my fish bone. Uh, no, to your, to your left. Um, and I went up the hill, and I've got what seems to be a pretty crushed, rolled up trilobite. Five. Oh, cool. And then I found another good, decent sized fragment of uh, fish bone. And then I found this hash plate of tentaculites. And there's a crinoid stem with some arms on it. And then a decent sized piece of uh, baculite as well. Or baculites. And then some other interesting little fossils. Nice little cluster of stuff. So, I'm just crawling up the edge of this cliffside, and I found this uh, nice fragment of fish bone, or maybe fish armor, I can't tell. But you can see the, uh, the bone cells, and you can see on this side, you can see that blue, that's an indicator that it's fish bone. It was just sticking up there, right out in the open. I thought while the sun would be out, I'd uh, quickly take a video and show you guys this uh, large uh, favocyte all cleaned up. Surprisingly, it was less damaged than I thought. There's some fresh damage over here, but then over here, it actually, it seems like there's just a bit of damage there. But most of this is either very old damage or it just grew like this. It kind of grew and tented like that instead of being a bit more circular. But yeah, you can see... There's other little corals and some bryozoans and some other interesting little things uh, growing on it. Or that got lodged on it and then fossilized. But you can see this is a huge uh, favocyte fossil. I apologize for the goose in the background. I'm just doing this on my front porch where the light is the best. But, uh,. I, was, I weighed this guy, and he's, he's just under 30 pounds. Uh, I think it was like 27 or 28 pounds was what I weighed it at. So it's quite a big, big one. There's a bigger one actually in a museum nearby. I've seen pictures of it. Um, it's, it's huge, let's put it that way. Um, apparently it took four grown men to lift when they installed it in the museum, so... You know, that gives you about an idea of what what size of a favocyte it was. But this is a lot less damage than I thought it was. And there's some interesting little fossils on it too. I'll uh, quickly show you the back end as well. Here's the back end. You can see the back end and along the base was more damaged. You can see actually the individual cells where they kind of sheer, sheared off. But the rest of this fossil is pretty cool. Oh, there's good texture and stuff and it's not too there's a bit of this weird I think it's like a carbonate -y kind of material this really brown cruddy material but it seems to kind of like when you wash it and just kind of even lightly brush it it seems to flake off not too badly um, but yeah you can see this is the back end of the favocyte it's got some good texture and patterns and some interesting little corals and bryozoans and other stuff on there so it's a nice little uh, uh not a little uh large uh, favocyte and i'm happy that i found it here are some of my best finds cleaned up start with let's go through the brachiopods so this one was just missing one of its wings so it was still a good example to take home and just study now this one I didn't take home because of the brachiopod, but actually because of the tiny little, you can see right there, 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 and on this backside as well. If the camera wants to focus properly, there we go. You can see right in that groove, there are these little swirly 
shells. I forget uh, a collecting a fossil hunting guy I know who's a lot more um, well knowledge helped me out and identified them. But I'm sure unsure if they were tiny gastropods or they're little uh, snails, the shells left over by these snails that would attach themselves to the, um, or, or not snails, uh, worms, these little worms that would attach themselves with like this shell-like casing. Uh, I'll, for all the stuff I have, I'll try and put up the, uh, the names for them, for those who are interested. I believe this is a brachiopod. It's the, it's one one part of the shell of the brachiopod. You can actually see here the where it hinged. So brachiopods are a type of bivalve. I believe an extinct bivalve, if I remember correctly. Here's another one. This one was whole. Um, this might be a bivalve. I'll have to look at my look at the species and I'll put the names up and say uh make corrections if I said something incorrectly because fossils are not my specialty. Of course I dropped this guy. How clumsy of me. Um, but he's got some lovely striated patterns. I'm still getting used to my new phone. Recently I had to purchase a new phone because my old one died on me suddenly which was a bit of an annoyance. Sorry about that. Out of focus. But um, I got a new phone now. And hopefully it actually does better at videoing. I think the quality is better. Um, this one's a bivalve. You can see a bit of it's missing. But it's really lovely. Love, uh, piratized lovely. Piratized lovely. Wow, I can speak. It's nicely piratized. Uh, it's got this awesome brassy bronze kind of coloring. It's crushed. But... Apparently, this is a pretty decent sized one for the species. And then a tinier bivalve, but this is pretty big for the size. You can see the back end, kind of where the hinge would be, and then the front end, I believe. Kind of reminds me of like a mini pen oyster, if you have ever seen a pen oyster. Similar shape, I think. Or I might be thinking of something differently. Now, I also found a couple, uh, at least decent sized, uh, for my own collection, uh, decent sized, uh, wow, I'm mind blanking on the baculites. That's what they are. Uh, I believe these are two different species. You can kind of see this one. The sections are more distinct. If this could focus properly, you can see the sections, the ring sections are more distinct. Whereas this one, it's, they're still there, but it's hard to tell. I love the piratized bits. Speaking of which, I've got this lovely uh, goniotite. Love those segments on there. Really cool little piece. And with the piratized stuff, actually, I was talking with a with a compatriot, and he mentioned how some of the piratized stuff is nice and uh, bronzy and flat, and then some of it's super fuzzy. Now this is a piece that's got a mix of both. You can kind of see those stringy bits are a bit more fuzzy and almost druzy is the best way to describe it. And there are the flatter stuff is kind of bronzy. Now I thought, and I, I thought correctly, that the bronzy stuff is just the fire the fossil being piratized, whereas the more druzier stuff, it's the fossil has been piratized, yes, but then also additional sp Thousands of smaller pyrite crystals have grown on top of it. And I'll throw a picture up right now. Actually showing a close-up of some of the thousands and thousands of pyrite crystals that I, is on this guy on the fuzzy parts, the druzy parts. Moving on, I'll do the uh, gastropods here. These gastropods. Uh, this is a type of spiny gastropod. These nubs on here um, would have been spines. And interestingly enough, these gastropods are also found in con conjugation with crinoids. And you can see here the arms of a crinoid calyx. Unfortunately, the calyx wasn't there, which is a shame, but you can see the arms. So there's a theory that these actually were predators and they hunted, they ate uh, crinoids. Here's a smaller one I found earlier in the day. And there's a bunch of crinoid bits. 
it's been sitting on top of. Here's the different species of, uh, or I believe this is a different species of gastropod. Same with this guy, but I think this guy also got crushed a bit because on the back end, you can see it's a bit flatter, but it's, just, it's a gastropod as well. Now, some might be wondering what these two pieces are, these what look like just lumps of weird stone. Well, these are actually sections of uh, trilobite burrows that uh, got chipped off of a larger rock that was full of burrows. And the interesting thing about these trilobite burrows is if you see those like tiny black and brown specks in there, if you look under a microscope, some of those will actually be like fishbone, scales, teeth and stuff because the trilobites were opportunistic and they, when a fish died, the, the uh, placoderms, that's what would have been around, uh, those fish, their carcasses would have, could have been dragged off by trilobites into their burrows and then eaten. And so then what happens is these burrows get filled with a bunch of debris from the scavenged uh, remains of placoderms and other creatures. This one has a pretty big knobby bit of fish bone or fish tooth. But uh, as I was talking, you of course saw closer up pictures of the stuff that I was mentioning. And that's the beauty of having a uh, close up camera. You can look at your stuff super close up, which I did actually with, I, I found more fish bone fragments than this, but these are the biggest pieces that I found. And a couple of the pieces, this one I be, believe is bone, whereas these two specifically seem to indicate that they were on the outside, uh, like plating or scaling. Um, but interestingly enough, uh, some of these pieces, spe specifically uh, these two pieces, this one has some weird indentation, and then this one has scratches that I know are old because there's what I believe is actually calcinony, because on this piece you can actually, I'll be throwing up pictures as I'm talking, you'll see kind of this white to blue, light blue, bluish mineralization. And uh, on this piece it shows really well, and it kind of fills in the uh, the cells, the bone cells, almost like gem bone is what I think of when I see it. Uh, but with this one, it has these gouges in it that um, there's a thin layer of that blue mineralization, what I believe is calcinny, in the scratches, indicating that the scratches are old. And so I was talking with a friend and I was like, yeah, maybe it's predation. And I mean, we can't confirm for sure, but that it's just cool to see like that kind of damage and stuff. And same with this one. This one had, uh, it didn't have scratches, but it had uh, dimples in it. And so it's just cool to see uh, kind of like, things that could have happened while these animals were alive. Like maybe they got into a tussle with another fish or maybe they got eaten by a larger prey, a, a larger uh, predator, or they uh, were scavenged by a trilobite. And those are signs of trilobite, uh, a trilobite eating them. It's just cool to think about. Or as one would joke, it's uh, food for thought. Now I didn't find any whole trilobites. I thought I might have found one kind of crushed up roller, but uh, it was just a head. But I did find uh, this large eye section of a trilobite. You can see the individual uh, kind of ocular cells. I think that's what they're called, or cells. And then here's that head that I was talking about that I thought might be uh, crushed up, uh, crushed up roller. But that back part is actually just a piece of brachiopod and not a uh, piece of the uh, trilobite tail. I'm still getting used to how my phone focuses. This new phone uh, focuses a bit differently than my uh, old phone, which is uh, a bit annoying, but what can you do? But you can see here's the uh, head of the trilobite. This chunk also had its a uh, bit of trilobite head in there. I think it's just a bit of the head because it just seems like a fossil soup. Like there's a bunch of like corals and other stuff all mixed in together. Now this piece is interesting because this is a larger uh, crinoid stem and I picked it up because I thought this little section here was a smaller crinoid arm from the crinoid, the crinoid of this stem, but I believe it's actually a separate crinoid, a smaller one. And you can see this stem leads up to 
a uh, a crushed mass of crinoid bits up there. I'll be throwing up a picture of it. And then there are these smaller broken up little arm segments coming out this side, which makes me theorize that this could actually be a small crushed up crinoid. Wow, I am struggling to say crinoid today. Uh, crinoid calyx, which could be cool. Let me know what you guys think, uh, you fossil collectors, if you think that's a crushed up cry crinoid calyx or just, you know, something else from the crinoid. Last but definitely not least, I have these small hash plates of tentaculites. Uh, last year I found some pretty lovely tentaculite hash plates and one de really decent sized one, just chock full of tentaculites. Actually, link in the description to that video if for those interested. But these have a bit more matrix and the tentaculites in these are a bit more whole and uh, fine. And it's just a lovely hash plate. And then same with this one. It's smaller, but it's got lots and lots of tentaculites in it, which is super cool. And it's got some brachiopod bits on the back as well. Uh, but yeah, I love these little fossils. These fossils are just fascinating. Now, I think I've mentioned before, people don't exactly know what tentaculites are. Some people theorize uh, somehow related to brachiopods because of certain features that they have or maybe little tiny squids, or maybe worms, who knows. Uh, but there's tons of theories on where they should be placed in the animal kingdom. But they're uh, cool fossils nonetheless. We have gotten to the end of the video. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you like this type of stuff, or if you like uh, arrowhead hunting, flint napping, lapidary, or rock hounding, I also do videos on that if you're new to the channel. Uh, please also, if you're new, please Definitely consider liking this video and subscribing. It really helps out my channel and allows me to grow my community and share as much knowledge and information that as, as I can that I have learned from other people in the community. Because this is my goal with my channel is to share uh, knowledge because I found people who, who, before I started my channel, I found people online who did similar stuff to me that were willing to share information and show things. And so I learned how to do stuff about this hobby because of them. And so I want to do the same thing and give back to the community. Uh, but thank you guys for watching and have a good day. And I'll see you guys in the next video.